we wrote the grant as a means for really trying to create uh, a set of incentives for teachers to actually take this class. The, the Westland Wilsonville School District has decided to actually make sustainability kind of one of its central goals. Uh, the hope has been to attract enough teachers so that there would be three to four people, five people per school, who were really um, kind of more immersed in this knowledge about sustainability and uh, a sense of the kinds of things that, that could happen in the classroom. One of the things that I'm going to be emphasizing is the importance of really linking instruction at the classroom level to the community more deeply than oftentimes happens. Mm -hmm. So we talk about community or place-based education. <laughs> here. I'm Alice and I'm the education director. Um, so I, my job mostly consists of talking with teachers and people at youth organizations and other nonprofits. So our main goals are kind of to talk about land stewardship um, and sustainable agriculture. One of my hopes in the class is to broaden people's understanding about sustainability so it goes beyond these kind of more technological responses, small-scale responses, so that they understand just the gravity of the situation that humanity is facing at the moment, and also can be think, begin to think more broadly about the kinds of things that teachers can do to help students begin to see that there are these kinds of issues that they're going to face as adults, but there are very specific kinds of things that can be done at the community level. I'm Lysia Farley, and I teach at Rosemont Ridge Middle School in Westland. And I'm Jim Hartman, and I teach environmental science at Westland High School. I would feel successful, and I guess the real measure of whether what I'm doing is successful isn't something I'll be able to really check on for about 20 years. But, but I'll feel successful if students become aware of the fact that they have the power to change the world, to change the tra trajectory that we're headed towards. And I teach them a lot of really scary things about what's happening ecologically especially, and also in terms of social justice and that sort of thing. But the goal is not to, you know, depress the hell out of them, but, but to make it so that they see, okay, here's one, this is business as usual, but we have the power to, to change things and make things go differently. So we're doing it on a really local basis. They've been working on making proposals to our uh, superintendent, actually, um, about changes they'd like to see within the practices of Westland High School and our school district. I just want to ultimately uh, make sure that I'm sending kids up to the high school who, who feel like they've got a jump start on the ideas. And I'd like to see more sustainability in our classrooms. Um, some more time out in the community and less time in the classroom, um, just to see if we can make it more of a difference that way. Well, I think that the, the main thing is just to recognize that there are immense things that young people can actually contribute to their communities, not only in terms of just the grunt work of, of doing restoration work, but also collecting data and, and uh, giving testimony at public hearings and, uh, and, and really being able to share their voice with people who are making decisions. And I think we need to find ways to really tap into the energy and intelligence and commitment of young people, recognizing that three and four-year-olds are as much citizens as 50 and 60-year-olds, and that their voices ought to be as significant in our decision-making as the voices of anyone else.